G'day, in this particular video I want to continue the conversation that we kicked off in video number two. The question we were answering there was, uh, does it matter where you take weight from if you're going to remove mass from a motorcycle? And the answer is yes. In there we looked at sprung versus unsprung weight and we came to the conclusion that if we were to choose between removing a kilogram of sprung or a kilogram of unsprung weight, we would take the unsprung weight out because that would allow the bike to handle better, the suspension would actually need to do less work to achieve its desired outcome and that is to keep the wheels on the ground. In this video, I want to look more at not so much the unsprung versus unsprung uh, weight but the rotating mass because that's another factor that needs to be considered. Now when you're riding a motorcycle along, uh, let's just say you were doing 300 kilometers an hour, the, the, rear, the rear and front wheel of this bike, 300 kilometers an hour, are rotating around about two and a half thousand revolutions per minute. So quite significant and given the weight of these wheels, the outward force or centrifugal force measured in newtons would be quite significant. Now, why does it matter? Well, the easiest way to explain that is to you know, get a push bike wheel. So I've got this push bike wheel here. It's not spinning, it's just staying stationary. The energy required or the force required to change its plane is, is not very high. So I can actually do that quite easily, right? Very little effort to do that. But now, what if I spin the wheel? When I spin the wheel, you get a gyroscopic effect. So the outward force we refer to as centrifugal force. Now, to change the plane of that wheel, particularly if I try to do it quickly, that takes a lot of force to do because of that gyroscopic effect. So it's very difficult to change its plane. It wants to hold its position there. Now, that helps us understand a couple of things. It, it helps us understand why a motorcycle, um, when you're at lean, traveling at speed, you don't need to put a steering input there to hold it on its, hold it on its arc because the wheels will basically, because of the gyroscopic effect, want to hold their plane. So it takes no input on the, in terms of steering to hold that bike on an arc. Now, the, the, the biggest issue for a motorcycle is you've got to get it onto that arc. So you've actually got to change the direction of the motorcycle. And this is where that gyroscopic effect comes into play because the centrifugal force, you have to overcome that through a steering input. And the faster you're going, the more mass that you have in these spinning um, wheels and all the componentry associated with that, the more force is required to change the plane of, that, of those spinning masses. And the benefits of removing weight that is spinning mass is that it makes it easier for you to actually change the direction of the motorcycle. And that's a big issue because you know, anyone knows that the faster you go for a given turn point in a corner, the faster you actually have to steer that motorcycle to hit your apex. So if we can remove rotating mass from this motorcycle, right, not only is it unsprung, but it's going to reduce the amount of force required to change the direction of that spinning mass, which means we actually should be able to steer that bike a little easier. And this actually explains why when you look at the MotoGP bikes, there's so much time and energy and money spent on lightening those rotating masses. They have titanium rods, they have titanium axles, titanium bolts, carbon fiber discs, magnesium alloy wheels, or I don't, know, I don't think they have carbon fiber these days but they've got this super light componentry so that you can steer the bike more quickly. Now, on a motorcycle like this, it can make a huge effect. And uh, that's why you can you replace componentry uh, like nuts and bolts that hold the rotors on, the calipers on, uh, the nuts that hold the sprocket on, the sprocket itself, the chain, which is a spinning mass, the wheels, the tires, right? All of those things, if you affect the mass by reducing it, on these, it's going to have a big effect on your ability to steer that motorcycle. Now, a few numbers here, just so we can appreciate, um, you know, what the actual numbers are. This worksheet, like in the previous videos, you can download it below. Just click on it, have a look at it. You can, you know, analyze it, uh, test it yourself, plug your own numbers in it. The rear wheel weight saving. Let's just say we remove one kilogram of weight, um, wrong, one kilogram of mass from the rear wheel. What's the effect of that? The, the, that one kilogram mass, right? Let's just say it was 200 millimeters from the axle. So it's radius, right? Spinning around, it's 200 millimeters from the axle. It's traveling at 200 kilometers an hour. And we know that when a wheel is rotating, oh, sorry, we're doing 200 kilometers an hour on a motorcycle like this, the rear wheel rotates around about 1,600 revolutions per minute. So um, it's rotating quite a fair bit. Well, what's the effect of that? 
right, a kilogram spun at speed, right, is going to weigh significantly more. And by the calculation I've got here, it can weigh anything up to 6,000 newtons. So the outward force of that kilogram is quite significant. And you've got to overcome that in order to change the direction of the motorcycle there. So that's it. I hope that was useful. You know, I hope it made sense. To summarize all of the videos that we talked about, uh, where we talked about mass reduction, yes, there is an advantage by removing mass uh, in relation to acceleration and deceleration. Yes, it matters where you take it from, because if you can remove unsprung weight, it's going to allow the bike suspension to work better um, and the bike should handle better. And secondly, uh, in that question, if we remove rotating mass, then it's going to allow us to change the direction of the motorcycle more easily as well. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, don't forget down below, there's the Excel worksheet. You can download that. You can you know, have a play with that yourself. And if you're not a subscriber, click on the subscribe button. I'd love to spend this two-wheel journey with you over the course of the next few years or whatever the case may be. And uh, that's it. See you in the next video. Bye.